Hey guys, nice to see you. Now in today's video I will show you 13 very cool blues licks played on the style of Josh Smith. Now if you want to improve your blues improvisation with licks from a modern blues virtuoso, then I'm sure you're gonna enjoy this video. I would say let's check out our first example. Alright, now firstly here slowly. Now for this one we are on the key of B minor, and it's actually way easier than it looks. Now you're sliding in, a, in the first position of the B minor pentatonic on the B string, from the 7th fret with his index finger to the blue note, which is the 6th fret and then back into the 7th fret. This just happens really fast. And he's gonna play the root note of the E string. Then I'll repeat this little lick and play the 9th fret of the E string. And then again. Then we play the 8th fret of the E string. Jump back to the 7th fret of B string. And the last note will always be the little bend up here, the E string 10th fret. And you can see he's almost always plucking this with his ring finger probably on the E string. So he's hybrid picking, you don't have to do this, but it sounds cool. And he's repeating this for like four times. Alright, now for the second look, he is as well in the B pentatonic, but he's mixing the major and minor pentatonic. Now he's starting out by hammering onto the 9th fret of B string from the 7th fret, then plays the root note at the E string, and he's gonna do two quick slides in a row from the 9th fret to 10th fret of E string. Then he's gonna play the root note of the E string again, rolls all of the index finger to the B string 7th fret. Then he's gonna basically repeat the same move of the B string. It's a slide from 9th fret of B string to 10th fret. Then he's gonna play the 7th fret of the B string and then jumps to the root note of the D string. And he slides into the minor third from the sixth fret of a G string to the seventh fret. And this is the last little line. It's the root note of a D string. Then he rolls over his ring finger to the ninth fret of A string. And then the chromatic line to the fourth interval here at the A string. And he's actually using this to play from the one chord to the fourth chord. And this is a perfect way to do this because he lands on the root note of the fourth chord. And the first half is perfect for the one chord. And he gives that last note some slight vibrato. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video so far, just a quick reminder, please subscribe to the channel and also turn on the bell. And then I would say, let's continue. Now the next leg is awesome, the key of B, and it's actually from the same song, but it played in a different venue. Now we're starting out here at the root note at the 9th fret of the D string. When he jumps this part of the B major triad, he slides into that. That's the 7th fret of the B string and the 8th fret of the G string and he slides into that from one fret below. 
and plays the root note again. And I'm very sure he's hybrid picking this, so he's gonna use his middle finger and ring finger for the G string and the B string. Then he's gonna roll over his ring finger to the 9th fret of G string. Then place again the root note, which is in this case the pedal note, we always go back to this note. And he's gonna play the blue note on the 10th fret G string with his pinky. And then we go back to the root note. When he slides with his ring finger from the 9th fret of a G string to a blue note. And plays the root note at the high E string. And he's gonna do a quick slide into the blue note and back. Holds off to the 7th fret of a G string. Plays the root note of the 9th fret. Then another roll from the 9th fret D string to the 9th fret G string. And back to the root note. Then he places Pinky the 10th fret of B string. Then again another slide into the blue note. And back and then with this little bend up here which is awesome at the G string to the at the 9th fret. And this lick actually has the same ending than the lick before. Next like we're on the key of F and we are in the BB King position, he absolutely loved this, loves this position and he's starting out by playing a dyad, it's the 7th fret of G string and the root note of the key in the F he had the 6th fret B string and he's gonna bend up the 9th fret of B string a little bit, place the 6th fret of E string, hammers onto the 8th fret of E string and slides here to the 11th fret, which is the major 6th interval, sorry, the minor 7th interval actually, at the 11th fret. Then he goes back to the 6th fret of E string, hammers on and pulls off to the 8th fret. Plays the 9th fret of the B string, and does a hammer on and pull off at the 6th fret of the B string to the 8th fret and back. Then he does a little slide, he has a B string to the 9th fret from the 8th fret. Then he hammers on from a root note of a B string to the 8th fret B string. Plays the 7th fret with his middle finger on the G string. Plays the root note twice and gives that some slide vibrato. And bends up the 8th fret of B string just a little bit. Click slowly. Nice starts out by playing the root note at the 6th fret of a B string. Then he bends up the 9th fret of a B string a little bit. And he digs really into this note with his pick. Then he plays the 6th fret of a E string and goes back to the 9th fret B string. Then two quick hammer ons from a 6th fret E string to the 8th fret. Then the 6th fret of the E string. And then a pull off from 9th fret B string to a 6th fret B string. Then 
Now we have seen this move before, a slide from the B string 8th fret to the 9th fret, from major 2nd to the minor 3rd. Then he plays the root note for a short second here. Hammers on to, to the major 2nd here, the 8th fret of B string. Plays the 7th fret, the 5th interval, and the G string. And gives the root note some slider router. are a great example how you don't actually have to play a lot but to create a memorable solo it's very very important to have a motive in your improvisation and you can see in this example he is having one he's starting out by playing root note, root note. he have a second position he's starting out by playing root note he have a second position twice then he bends up the 4th fret of the E string twice, but just a little bit. And he plays this all in a very staccato style manner. Then he walks up the scale, 6 and 8 on the E string. And then he jumps back to a 4th fret of the E string and bends that up. And then he's actually repeating this whole, the, the same lick, the whole lick, but just with a slight different rhythm. Maybe a bit more staccato. For the exact phrasing I would suggest listening again to the, to the solo. repeating this motive for a third time but after playing the fourth fret at the E string and bending up this just a little bit he's doing the Steve Ray Vaughan style like he's pulling off from root note of a B string to a minor seventh and slides us to the first position the fifth interval he had the first fret of a B string This is how he ends that whole series of licks. It's a root note here, the B string 6th fret. Then we hammer on from minor 3rd here, the 4th fret at the E string to 5th fret to a major 3rd. Then again the root note. 6th at the E string. Then the 8th fret. And then again the slide to the minor 7th. We have seen this in the other licks before, he really likes to do this. He really likes to do a slide here in comparison to B.B. King who would just bend this note up to the minor 7th. Then again let's pull off here the B string from the 9th fret in this case to the 6th fret. And again this little slide to the 9th fret. And again we hammer on, we have seen this all before in the other licks. And then the, the almost the last note is a root note. But in this case he ends the lick by sliding quickly into the 9th fret of B string. And back. And then plays the 5th interval. These three licks are very very cool because it actually shows it's almost the same 
than the series of leaks in the solo before. Uh, just goes to show you, just because you're in a different key, you don't have to play any of the leaks. Uh, it's not actually a lot of notes. Now in this case we're on the key of G. And this is of a blues shuffle, cross chord saw style. And he's hammering onto the 5th fret from the 3rd fret of B string. Plays the root note at the E string. Then slides from 6th fret to the 8th fret of E string. And again, this little bend up here at the E string at the second minor pe uh, pentatonic position. Then 8 and 10 on the E string. Then the hammer on from a minor third to a major third. And again, the Stevie Lake, the position change from a second minor position to a first position. Our second leg, it's just the sixth fret twice. Then the eighth fret. Then the tenth fret. And then just the hammer on from a minor third to a major third, and then he slides down the, down the fretboard. And again, those all very staccato. Now the beginning of this leg is very cool. It plays the root note of the B string, the eighth fret. Then does a trill on the major third. And then again, the walk up eight and ten on the E string. And then the ending is actually the same. And you can definitely play around with this and create your own licks. That's what's so cool. Last leg is also very cool because it plays with the concept of call and response, but with yourself actually. And you can see this now. He's in the key of E, playing a blues shuffle. Now he slides on the BB King box. This is a classic lick. He plays the sixth fret at the G string, plays the root note, and again the sixth fret of G string. Then he bends up a minor third just a little bit. There's actually just the first half. And now for a second half, he's gonna slide again into the BB King box, into the sixth fret of a G string. But this time, after playing the root note, he instantly goes to a minor third and bends that up just a little bit. And he goes back to the root note. And goes all the way down here to a minor third of the E string, the third fret, and bends that down. Such a cool concept and such a cool lick. Alright guys, I hope you learned something in this video. If you did, then please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Also consider supporting me on Patreon, I would really appreciate that. And yeah, I would like to see you next time. Bye-bye.